We traditionally taught that thinking is just the function of the brain. But today, thinking is becoming that thing which we do with these devices in our hands, which have AI power within them, our smartphones, and our brain. It's almost this fusion of man and machine in one. The smartphone in our pocket is a thousand times more powerful than the computer we used to land man on the moon in 1969. And a lot of the AI computations that we need are being done on the device itself, on our personal smartphones. I think our kids are likely to be the last generation that will need to sit for a road test to obtain a driving license. We are quickly moving into the stage where AI is not simply creating text, images, sound, video, but is actually managing the physical world around us, these environmental sensors that make the world so interesting. It took us around 2.4 million years simply to go from one technology, which is the stone that we use to carve out food and carcasses, to the controlled use of fire. That's a heck of a lot of time, right, to move forward in technology. But if you had to move to our lifetime, you know, within just 60 years or so, we went from being able to fly the first plane to the Wright brothers in 1903 to landing the first man on the moon in 69. I mean, for most people, these were two events which happened in their own lifetime. And it's a sense of how quickly technology evolves and how mindful we must be to this evolution, to be able to harness it to our potential. One of the major issues we have with the use of AI is profiling, right? The ability for technology to understand you so intimately, not simply your musical tastes and so on, but far more than that, that it can understand you so intimately that it can profile you so aggressively that it starts restricting the gamut of choices that you make. If AI today can do 45% of the tasks that we most often handle on a day-to-day -day basis. Who really is the employee? Who are we asking God and the employer to be benevolent towards? And this opens up this whole key debate for us as an organization. How do we upskill our workforce? How do we handle performance appraisals when we're pitting human capability with AI capability? What is fair compensation? How do we handle the wealth distribution that AI creates? Technology and digital change isn't about hardware or software, it's about people. It's about organizations. It's about charting a way forward. And if there's one area which we need to work on is literacy, we need to ensure that our businesses, our community, also our kids, understand the basic concepts of AI. AI tools now are able to do repetitive capabilities better than humans. But what it can't do at this stage is negotiate complex social relationships, right? So we need to evolve the way we think, and I think literacy is where it all starts. We need to understand that employability is going to be less about what you learned in your university years, and it's more likely to be about your ability to adapt over time, to use technology as an assistant to your job, and to change and refresh your knowledge constantly. We are moving into a decade whereby those companies that are data aware, that have a data rich mindset and can move that data from merely passively collected to actively used at the touch point with the customer, those are the companies that will survive. Those are the companies that will win. Work will no longer mean repetitive processes. Work will no longer mean a human having to do the same element of activity 1,000 times through the cycle of a quarter. That's gone. So those enterprises which will replace repetitive, repetitive work and instead imbue creativity are those which will move the job market forward, which will attract the better candidates and will have more creative products. I mean, think about the public sector, the opportunity to be more efficient over there, where essentially the entire administrative arm of government is repeating processes. 
I mean, imagine if you could invest in changing that with the advantage of having a system that's explainable. Often civil service and administrative outcomes are not as explainable. I mean, really, this gives us, as a nation, a competitive opportunity, and I wish we'd take it. This is the most important story we are going to be telling ourselves in this century, right? But we're going to see a separation. Those businesses which can adopt the technology and those which won't because they're complacent. Those nations which will invest and build their economy around AI capabilities and those that don't. Now, zoom forward 10 years, that is an asymmetry, right? You've got companies or countries that are trailblazing with incredible economic capabilities and those which are going to seem like quasi medieval towns. That is the gap which technology empowerment creates. The future of work is blended, blending human capabilities with AI skills. If AI does one thing well, it's a great prediction machine and it's made it much easier for us to crunch large statistical models to create forecasts. The next board member should be AI, not human. <laughs> Why? Because it thinks out of the box. It can give you a hundred scenarios around business complexity that humans typically don't think about. And it's exactly that inhuman thinking that I want because it challenges the status quo. Innovation is a cross-functional requirement. So if I want the group to get stronger in its data mindset, I will create strong champions from within every unit of the organization to ensure that we're not hindering you know, our, our vision through one mindset of the IT team, but it is blended, it is cooperative, it is bringing in every fiber of the organization. On my way here, a cab driver said, oh, I've driven the Valletta St. Julian's route for the last 30 years, so I know exactly which road to pass from. But do you know what that driver who drove that road for 30 years doesn't have? He doesn't have 10,000 sensors in 10,000 cars running Google Maps telling you exactly the traffic the conditions traffic in is. that minute. So we change because we embrace the fact that data leads to better decisions. I think that one of the key functions of leadership is just that, right? It's bringing the team with you on this journey of change. And the more capable you are at doing it at different levels of management, then the better that vision becomes part of the organizational culture. Technology is just not an opportunity. I think it's a responsibility that you guys have as a group towards your customers to serve them better, towards your stakeholders, towards your shareholders in terms of the maximization of profits in the very markets that we serve. And maybe this is the invite to you all. Will you take the responsible decision and engage the technology for forward momentum? Or will you be complacent? I think there's nothing wrong with technology. Our children should be using technology, but it needs to be used mindfully, right? Yeah. So the issue is not the use, the issue is how it is used. And I think we need to teach a digital diet of mindfulness. When do you put the device down? And here we certainly have a problem as a nation. 